Molecular hydrogen therapy is exploding in the health space as a promising supplement that's actually been around for a long time, but hasn't gotten the deserved attention. Another very similar therapeutic substance is called Brown's gas. It actually has molecular hydrogen as one of its constituents. Now you may be wondering, what's the difference? Is one better than the other? Stick around because today we're breaking down the science, the differences, how they work, the benefits, the price, and everything you should know before choosing either molecular hydrogen or brown gas. If you're new here, hi, I'm Nick Urban, founder of outlier.com, where I get to help high achievers like you optimize your health and performance through bioharmony. Let's get started. First of all, what is molecular hydrogen? You'll see it abbreviated as H2, meaning diatomic hydrogen, H, H, or H2. It's generated through electrolyzing water. Using electricity, special machines split water, H2O, into hydrogen, H2, and oxygen, O2. It's surprisingly well-researched with nearly 2,000 documents on PubMed, and it's been studied across use in nearly 200 different animal models of health and disease. Molecular hydrogen is often called the smallest known molecule. And what's interesting about it, it's a selective antioxidant, meaning that it selectively reduces only the free radicals and reactive oxygen species that are elevated and unhealthy while leaving the beneficial signaling functions of other reactive oxygen species and free radicals, such as those generated by exercise, intact. Most antioxidants act indiscriminately and just quell all reactive oxygen species, for example. Among many other differences and properties between molecular hydrogen and other antioxidants, give this molecule really unique effects. For example, I have one paper up on my computer right now showing that molecular hydrogen actually increases post-exercise antioxidant capacity, which is the exact opposite of traditional antioxidants. Meaning that instead of blunting the effect, molecular hydrogen actually enhances the effects of exercise. If you wanna check out the whole list of benefits, everything about why molecular hydrogen has potential to help restore cardiometabolic function, optimize cognitive brain function, help bring abnormal biomarkers back into range, and even has potential regenerative medicine implications on things like stem cells, check out the article I wrote a while ago in the description for this video. All right, now what is Brown's gas? You'll also see this abbreviated HHO, or hydroxy in the literature. So with Brown's gas, you take water, you run it through an electrolyzer, and you get H2, molecular hydrogen, as well as oxygen, O2. The key difference is that with Brown's gas, you're not using a membrane during the electrolysis process. With molecular hydrogen, there is a membrane between the anode and cathode, and that membrane separates where the molecular hydrogen is created and where the oxygen is created. So as a result, you get two separate substances. The defining characteristic of Brown's gas is that there is no membrane. So you get a mixed gas of molecular hydrogen and oxygen. You get another unique and powerful substance that previous podcast guest of mine, George Wiseman, calls electrically expanded water, EXW. You get the hydrogen and oxygen in a ratio of two parts hydrogen to about one part of oxygen. With Brown's gas, you're actually getting a number of different constituents. Diatomic hydrogen, H2, diatomic oxygen, O2, the negatively charged plasma form of water, AKA electrically expanded water, water vapor or H2O, monoatomic hydrogen, just H, and monoatomic oxygen, just O. So Brown's gas is giving you more active constituents, but it's also far less researched than molecular hydrogen. Although interestingly, when I was interviewing George Wiseman, he's the world's foremost expert on Brown's gas. He mentioned that a lot of the studies, the published peer reviewed studies on molecular hydrogen were actually using Brown's gas because they did not have the membrane during the electrolysis step. 
So it would be interesting to see how much of the studies on hydrogen are actually on Brown's gas. But either way, there's a lot less research on Brown's gas. So why am I personally a fan of Brown's gas and why do I use a Brown's gas machine when companies constantly reach out? Personally, because I noticed the biggest effect. I've used tablets and water generators a number of times of the normal molecular hydrogen type. I do recover a little faster from my workouts. I sleep a little bit better and overall feel good, but I don't notice a big difference. By the way, for some great resources on all things molecular hydrogen, look into the work of Alex Tarnava and Dr. Tyler LeBaron. Those are two of the world's leading experts on all things molecular hydrogen. So personally, I travel with molecular hydrogen tablets because I can't bring my Brown's gas generator with me on the plane or even in my check bag, it's just too big. First of all, when I use Brown's gas, I feel a more steady energy throughout the day. Not like a caffeine energy, but more of just like a lack of fatigue, I guess, that persists. My mood tends to be and stay a little more elevated. And I've had several scars on my body that have gone away through use of inhalation of Brown's gas. Since I shared my review of the Brown's gas generator, I've gotten several people reaching out to me every single week about their experience and how revolutionary this system has been for their health and overcoming different health conditions. And I've actually heard from a number of clinics that have integrated this into their practice and gotten phenomenal results for their clients and patients. If the whole concept of plasma water rings a bell, that's because it's what Gerald Pollack has talked about in his book, The Fourth Phase of Water. And as I understand it, it's the same thing as structured water or easy water as he calls it. When I interviewed George Wiseman on the podcast, he also was telling me about his personal experience and the benefits he noticed from regularly using Brown's gas as one of the few health staples in his routine. Warts that he had on his hands and feet disappeared after having them for about 50 years, likely indicating that he modulated his immune system through Brown's gas. In line with the research on molecular hydrogen, he also mentioned that scars that he had for decades went from patches to gone. George also mentioned that his different organs that were struggling, such as his vision, his cardiovascular system, and his skin transformed to the point where he no longer needs glasses. Not only that, but his hair has even started to regain color. Now, of course, your mileage will vary. None of these are medical claims. They're simply an observation from the person who probably uses more Brown's gas than anyone, but it's interesting nonetheless. So how can you take these different therapeutics? How can you actually use them? Thanks to influencers like Gary Brecca and others, the market for molecular hydrogen is growing very quickly. You can find all kinds of products out there now. The best for most use cases, if you can afford them, are going to be the generators, but those tend to also be the most expensive often ranging from about $200 up to $3,000. I've even seen some for $10,000. You can also get inhalers for, for about $500 up to $5,000. Water bottles from about $100 up to $1,000 but I personally don't recommend water bottles because over use, the seals and gaskets wear out and they no longer can generate a high enough dose of molecular hydrogen to make a therapeutic difference. So if you can afford it, molecular hydrogen generator is best for most circumstances. Although if you want the convenience of simply just tossing a tablet in water or portability when traveling, the tablets can be a great pick and those range from about 30 bucks per 30 up to 100 or so. And you should make sure that the tablets advertise 12 parts per million as that's become the industry standard dose. Then Brown's gas generators, on the other hand, are a bit more expensive, usually about $1,000 on the low end, up to $5,000, but again, you can find them for $10,000 as well. Brown's gas generators are definitely more niche, they're harder to find, and expect to navigate through antiquated old websites. The reason I like the generators the best, whether for molecular hydrogen or Brown's gas, is that after the initial investment, the daily expense is pretty much just clean distilled water. And even with daily use, I'm going through about a gallon of distilled water in six or more months. So virtually nothing in terms of water and a little bit of electricity. Plus with the generators, you can inhale through a nasal cannula or you can drink the water or you can apply it topically. 
there's a lot of different ways that you can actually use molecular hydrogen. And the way I personally do it is I will inhale Brown's gas and then I'll also drink the water that it generates while I'm inhaling because the way you apply and use Brown's gas will determine which organ system and bodily processes are preferentially targeted. So when you drink the water, you're gonna get more of the gut and the GI benefits versus if you inhale, it's gonna go more into your bloodstream and act systemically. The downside with the generators is that hydrogen gas is explosive. So legit companies should have all of the safety mechanisms built in and it shouldn't be a problem, but that's one reason you don't want to skimp and just choose any old Brown's gas or molecular hydrogen device out there. One of the cool things I like about both molecular hydrogen and Brown's gas is that they have incredible safety profiles and at normal human dosages, there are no known serious adverse effects. If you wanna learn more about the tablets I recommend, the molecular hydrogen tablets, I'll put a link to my article on those in the description of this video. If you can afford it, I definitely recommend the molecular hydrogen generators because those give you the best long-term bang for your buck and the most ways that you can take advantage of Brown's gas or molecular hydrogen if you go that route. So your first choice is molecular hydrogen or Brown's gas. My bias is towards Brown's gas because it has more constituents within it and it seemed to get people better results. And a lot of the studies showing the benefits of molecular hydrogen were probably actually using Brown's gas. But there's no doubt that the majority of the research has been done on molecular hydrogen. So if you want the one that's the most research backed or you just want the convenience of tablets, you're gonna to wanna to go with molecular hydrogen instead. Then we have the administration form. I recommend against the water bottles because they don't have very good longevity. Molecular hydrogen tablets are a great pick if you wanna test the waters, but the expense adds up quickly over time. So my recommendation is to try them for say four months, six months, and see if you notice a difference. If you do, then you can upgrade to a hydrogen machine and only use the tablets when traveling, or you can go the whole Brown's gas route. And there, I don't think there's such thing as Brown's gas tablets. So your only option is going to be to go for the machine. When you're choosing machines on either end, you'll wanna make sure they have good safety features. They've been third-party tested to make sure they actually output molecular hydrogen and or Brown's gas. With molecular hydrogen, you can use a test kit to make sure that your machine, your water bottle, your tablets are actually putting out the dose that they claim to be. I don't think Brown's gas has that capability yet. So there you have it. We just cut through some of the confusion regarding Brown's gas versus molecular hydrogen, but the conversation does not stop there. Get detailed breakdowns on longevity, bioharmonization, technologies, tools, and cutting edge health strategies at outlier.com. If you found this video helpful, drop a comment below and let me know your thoughts. Subscribe, share this with someone who needs to hear it, and until next time, be an outlier.